Praise the Lord. I hope that you are too. I know that the Spirit of God is with us. Amen. Amen. And God is good all the time. Amen. 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 Not just some of the times, not just, you know, a few times, once a year. No, he is good all the time. Amen. All right. So as you can see, I have entitled this message today, The Prayer of an Heir. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I want to open up with the... We, we Americans, we say the prayer of Jabez, but it's actually the prayer of Yabez. The name is pronounced Yabez, amen? So I want us to open up this morning uh, with the prayer of Yabez. We will pray, uh, the presence of the Lord is here, amen? amen. amen. So let's, uh, yeah, let's just start with First Chronicles 4, <clears throat> verses 4, 9 through 10. And the word of the Lord reads, there was a man named Yabes, who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Yabes because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Bless me with, please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted his request. Amen. Stand with me real quickly. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Hallelujah. We stand, Lord, in honor of your presence. Hallelujah. Because we know that your presence is already here. For where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst, God. We are standing. Hallelujah. On holy ground in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we receive your anointing to hear what your spirit has to say. We receive your anointing this morning all over this place, God. That our blind eyes will be open, God. That our hearts will be closed this morning, that we will be encouraged this morning, that we will be uplifted, God, hallelujah, for you are the lifter of our head, God, so in the name of Jesus, Lord, I receive your anointing, for my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, oh God, yes. and so I pray that you flow through me this morning, yes. and use this vehicle as a vessel unto glory to you, Lord God, that your children will receive what you have for them this morning, God, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. amen. hallelujah. Okay, so out of this passage, there's five points that I want to bring out this morning. I touched on this briefly on Wednesday morning when I did the Women's Connect, and I realized after I had spoken it, oh, Lord, this is what you have for Sunday. Wait, <laughs> I got ahead of you a little bit, so I had to dig in deeper and say, okay, God, what do you want? And then I was on the fence, and so then I, I had to check with my sister and ask her, what, what are the songs for Sunday? And I knew right then and there when she told me we're singing Waymaker that this was the message for this morning. Amen. Amen. And so, all right, five, I want to keep that scripture up. Five encouraging points about this passage. And the first one that I want to bring out is that it says here, his mother named him Yabez because his birth was so painful. How many of you know that great victories often come after so much pain and suffering, right? Yeah. Those of you that are moms, you can say yes. yes. She named him Yabez because we had a sorrowful moment. Hello, hello. We, we were in pain, but then as soon as that baby was born, there was a victory. Hallelujah, right? Yeah. And we had this beautiful baby, and we remember the pain no more. Yeah. Moms. Right? I do not lie. As soon as that baby's born, that's it. You forget. You're like, whoa, this is great. It's so well worth the suffering, right? And so great wars, people, are won. But what is the expense of that great war? Many, many suffer. Many die during the war. But yet so many times, and we cheer about the victory. And we're like, yes, victory. Hallelujah. We won. We won. We won. But so many suffer so much heartache during wars because they lose their loved ones, right? Yeah. Cancer survivors rejoice at the victory that they are cancer-free. But what about the pain and suffering through the chemo and the re radiation? Nevertheless, a victory, right? Yeah. And so, and our salvation, which is life's most important victory. At what price did our salvation come to us? At the price of our, of our Lord and Savior being led to the slaughter. Amen? As a lamb to the slaughter, the Bible says. And so, wow, how amazing. Because that's, 
it, you know, that stood out to me when I saw, wow, she named him Yabes, which means sorrow, because his birth had been so painful. But hallelujah, this man's prayer has been known, it's famous, and all he did was pray a few little words. But I want to break down those words, amen? So as you can see, he prayed, oh, that you would bless me. How bold, how bold, bless me. You know, we just sang that song, I'm not here for blessings, right? Because the truth is that if the Lord didn't ever bless us again, Wow, him going to the cross really is all we need. Everything else is just choices, and it's up to us to make the right choice. But if truly we have come to the cross and we have allowed God to come into us, to be with us, to lead us, to guide us, we're going to go through some stuff. Amen. Because, hello, can we admit we are an ugly people without the Lord? That's right. right? Any person without God, forget it. They're ugly. They're ugly. Because all, they just try efforts, one effort after another. But when we have the Lord, He purifies us. He beautifies us. Amen? Amen? And we begin to live so, diff so, so differently. But here this man just starts out, bless me. How could he do that? Like, God, just bless me. Like, I, I've, heard, I've preached it also myself, that God is not a sugar daddy. Right? So how can we go to the Lord and say, bless me? Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> Let's look at Romans eleven seventeen, And Romans eleven seventeen says, But some of these branches from Abraham's tree, some of the people of Israel have been broken off. And you Gentiles, who were branches from a wild olive tree, have been grafted in. See, what happened is, God came for a chosen people. It was the people of Israel. It was the Jews, right? He didn't, originally, he didn't come for the Gentiles, which is all of us. Unless, of course, you are sitting here and you are from the tribe of God's chosen people and you've been born from it. But because they fell away, look, some of the branches have been broken off. That's what he's talking about here. Mm -hmm. but, but because those branches broke off, he was able to take us and to graft us into God's family tree. I don't know about you, but whew, that means I am royalty, baby. Hallelujah. Know it. Hallelujah. So now you also receive the blessing God has promised Abraham and his children, sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. See, we are grafted into the family tree of God. We have got to get that in our hearts. Not only in our minds, we need a, 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 a heart drop because we need God that is in our mind to fall into our heart and to know who we are in Christ. Amen. That we can go to him and say, bless me, Father. Hallelujah. Let's look at uh, Romans 8, 16 and 17. You know, yes, we confirm everything through the word of God. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Amen. So see, we all know that all of creation, God loves all of creation, but not all of creation can say that they are truly children of the Most Come High on, King, right? That's right? And so in verse 17, and since we are his children, why are we his children? As I look around this room, every one of us has declared our faith by coming to the cross and saying, I repent. Because it starts there. Right. If you have not said those words, I repent. And what does it mean to repent? It means to turn away from the stuff you know is wrong. That's right. But if you keep doing the same old stuff, I got to question your repentance. I got to question your salvation. Salvation comes when we repent, when we have received with all of our heart. See, it's one thing to stumble and fall. I'm the first one to tell you, yes, I stumble and fall all the time. And I'm not ashamed to admit my mistakes. Because I know that when I admit my mistakes and I put them out there, guess what? I'm going to do something about it. Otherwise, you're all going to be looking at me and saying, what a hypocrite. What a hypocrite. Ooh, his wife is a phony, fake, and a fraud. Right? <laughs> so we have to, to repent means, no, nope, I'm not going to do that anymore. This is the end of the road for that. Amen. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. Hallelujah. If back together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Amen. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. 
See, it comes with a price, right? We got to suffer a little bit. It's going to be a little uncomfortable. We're going to have some great victories like, like his mother had, but we're going to suffer a little bit. And can I hear an amen that it's okay to suffer because amen. we know how much amen. our God suffered, amen. amen? We've got to be willing to say, God, we're so good about saying, oh, God, I'll do anything for you. And the moment it gets rough, what do we do? Oh, I don't need this. I don't need this. I didn't, stay. I didn't come here for that. Oh, did you see how she looked at me? Oh, I don't need this anymore. Did you hear them talking about me? I don't need this anymore. We're so quick to want to turn away. Come on, man. Or because somebody, our family and our family offended us. Oh, I don't want to have nothing to do with them no more. Yep. What kind of love is that? What happened? No. We got to share the suffering. Right? Look at, uh, so this scripture tells us that, yes, we are heirs with Christ and co-heirs, uh, heirs with God and co-heirs with Jesus. Amen. Hello. Amen. Amen. So Jesus, where is Jesus? Jesus is sitting, seating at the right hand of the Father. Woo! Guess where my seat is? It's next to Jesus. Come Amen. On, it's next to Jesus. On, you gotta know who we are. And this is why your base was able to say, bless me, because he knew who he was. I want to look at Luke 15, verses 11 and 12. Okay, so this is the story of the prodigal son, and we all know the story of the prodigal son, but I want you to notice something. It says here, Jesus told them this story. A young, uh, a man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. Why would the father do that? Why would, what, I can't, I, you know, I picture this, that my kids would come and say, Mom, I want my share of my inheritance. True. <laughs> right? But see, that's our first reaction is to say, you children, boy. What's wrong with you? But honestly, this is what I've worked my whole life for. I have a home and I'm, you know, and I I, 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 I want to make sure that it's paid off before I die. And if I die before it's paid off, that's what I have a life insurance policy for because I want to pass that on to my children and my grandchildren. Right. right? So, but the point is this, that the son, he didn't plead. He didn't beg. He said, I want my share of your estate now before you die. Because you know why he did that? He knew who he was. And if he's a child of the king, he's entitled to that inheritance. What is an heir? An heir is a person legally entitled to the property or rank of another on that person's death. You're legally entitled. By virtue of being his son, he is legally entitled. A receiver of an inheritance is an heir. A beneficiary is an heir. And when you know who you are and you know what belongs to you, you don't ask, oh, uh, excuse me, can, can I take a sip of this water? It is mine. I'll take a sip of it. It is mine. It belongs to me. It was given to me. Oh, no. Amen? Yeah. And so Yabates knew that he didn't have to die to go to heaven to enjoy his inheritance. He knew that he could have it here on earth. Mm. Now, what he did with it, that's a whole nother sermon. But the fact that he knew who he was and he said, I want a share of, of my portion. I want my portion. I want my share. And the dad agreed because he knew, sure, it belongs to you, mm. right? Are you aware this morning of who you are? That as you sit here, every one of you are sons of the Most High King. You Amen. are daughters of the Most High King. Why Amen. should we settle for second best on, when man. we know whose we are? I don't settle for second best. I like the finer things in life. Now, but I'm not foolish to go out and to just hoard on the finer things in life. On, you know man. what? I go to my dad and I say, Daddy, bless me. And I'll tell you what, God blesses me. Hallelujah. He blesses me through the man Hallelujah. of God that he has equipped to be my husband. Amen. He Amen. blesses me through him. And oftentimes I don't got to go and tell my husband, but I want this, I want this, I really want this. He just sees my eyes and he says, oh, my, she wants it. Okay, and there he goes. And I get blessed. But I go to my father. I don't nag my husband for the things I want. I go to my father and I say, Lord, bless me. Hallelujah. Look at John 1, 12. 
it says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. To all who believed him and accepted him. See, we all preach Jesus. We all do. Oh, yes, Jesus is Lord. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And we talk the Christianese. But do we really stand on the word of God believing who we are? Do we? Right? Things come our way and we're so ready to like, nope, another day. I can't do that. Hmm. I'm not going to do that. But if you know who you are and if you truly believe with all his heart, then you know that you are an heir to the throne of grace. Oh, guys. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In this place, live and up. When you walk in that confidence, when you believe and you accept them, nothing can stand in your way. No illness, no disease, no nothing can stand in your way. No heartache, nothing can stand in your way. Who cares if people don't like you? Who cares if your family is mad at you? Who cares? God is on the throne. Amen. And we can go to him and say, Lord, Bless me, but let me tell you something. Unless we do according to his word and his will, yes, we can stand before him and say, bless me. But if we're not going to do according to his word and we're going to do whatever the heck we please, don't expect him to bless you. Come on, right? Our hearts have to be right. Because in everything that I am, in everything that I do, in everything that I say, I want my words to give grace to those who are hearing. I want my actions to reflect the love of God. Amen. And if we don't walk in that power, in that belief, in that being certain of that, we're going to mess up. We're going to fall. We're going to scrape up our knees. We're going to mess up. And then we're going to be ashamed. And when we're ashamed, oh I, oh, I know that they all know I can't go to church because I know that they're going to look at me. They're going to know what I did. Dust it off. Shake it off. We have a father who wants to forgive us. We, want a, we have a father who he wants to give us our inheritance. We just got to show him some gratitude sometimes, even when we fail. Amen? So Matthew 7, 7. Wait, did I skip something here? Let me just go. Okay, Matthew 7, 7. Yes. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. God wants to bless us. He says, keep on asking, because I want to give it to you. Keep on asking. Let's look at James 4, 2. <laughs> and he says, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. Isn't that how we were in the world? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, man, so true. We would jive and connive till we got our way. Manipulated, and we played people, and we did things. We went to the store and robbed. I remember being a little girl. Oh, my gosh. For those of you, anybody here from San Francisco, when Sears used to be on the corner and it was Army Street, anybody, you guys, no? Anyways, I remember being a little girl. I must have been like seven years old. And it was my first encounter with stealing at a store. Don't you guys take up on this? <laughs> God's watching you. You too, Capitan. So I remember going to the store. It was Christmas time with my brother. And um, we didn't have enough money. And at that time, Ginate. I don't know if anybody remembers Ginate. My mother loved Ginate. It was like a body wash. And uh, anyways... And we switched the prices on things so we could get her the bigger set instead of the smaller set because we really wanted to bless her for Christmas. That was my first experience with being pulled into the security office. Oh my gosh, I was so scared. My brother and I were like, what do we do? We're going to get a whooping. <laughs> you know, but this is what we would do. We would scheme to get things. I was a, I was a bad little girl. I mean, I'll admit, not a bad little girl, but... You know, I, I, I started heading to school in the first grade, believe it or not. 
because I would get bored easily, and so, you know, uh, I had to get my way, right? So anyways, he's, he says here, you are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to get it from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. I mean, he puts it right there. You don't have the things you don't you want because you didn't ask me for it. God just wants to pour it out. He just wants to pour it out on us. He wants to bless us. What did Jesus say? I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. God wants us to have the finer things in life. He created the finer things in life. He gave the wisdom to man to create the finer things in life. He wants to give us these things, right? But we, we fight. We steal, we jive, we, we lie, we cheat, right? Come on, I know some of you lied on your taxes at one point or another before coming to the Lord. Don't tell me you did it. All of a sudden, you had more kids than you can get credit for, right? Come on now. I'm thinking about taxes. So he says, bless me and expand my territory is what he prayed. Expand my territory. What does it mean to expand? It means to enlarge, right? To add on, Amen. to make it bigger. Amen? Amen? So I want to ask you, what do you desire in your heart this morning that God would expand for you? Maybe more wisdom? Maybe more patience? Maybe more understanding. Ooh, that's good. Patience mm -hmm. with understanding of why I got to wait. Come on, man. Right? Yeah. How about some knowledge? <laughs> some of us want more knowledge, right? Isn't that why we're in the theology class? Mm -hmm. Even I'm taking the theology class, and I realized, okay, I, I took it halfway before, and so now I just want to complete it. And I was so rushed the other day, like, oh, my gosh, I'm two chapters behind. And my husband looks at me, he goes, why are you stressing? It's not like you're doing it to become a pastor. And I thought, oh, yeah, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But see, when we ask God expand my territory, we're really saying, we got to be careful when we pray this. Mm -hmm. Take me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I remember being at the altar and singing that song. Um, uh, oh, my goodness. All my plans. All, all my all my plans, all my dreams, Lord, I place them at your feet. Oh my goodness, I can't remember the name of the song. It has escaped me right now. Uh, here I am, here I stand. Lord, my you guys know the song. Life is in your hands. Amen. Oh, I can't remember the name of the song. Yes, I give myself away. Thank you. So I have to sing the songs to remember what the songs are sometimes. At any rate, but I remember standing before the throne of God and singing this song, all my plans, God. And I realized, holy smokes, what am I singing? All my plans? Oh, my dreams? Hold up. Hold up. Oh, no. That's a lot. I'm giving you everything that I am to do what? To go tell people in the street that Jesus loves them? Oh, wait, wait, wait. And then I remember this came, because I had just read this, expand my territory. That's what it means. To let go of everything that I could ever have dreamed of possible for my life. Everything, and just say, okay, God, I'll go in the direction you want me to go. Yeah. Right? And then I had to remember that to whom much has been forgiven, much is required, right? And I thought, wow, God, okay. All right, sure, go ahead, expand my territory. And little did I know what God had and what that meant. But to expand my territory, you know, sometimes we want changes. We want more, right? We want to be somebody. We want the title. But have we counted the cost of what comes with that? It's being inconvenienced sometimes. It's being taken out of your comfort zone. It's being, being stretched like, oh, I can't take it anymore. But God knows that you can because he knows how far that rubber band will go. Yeah. We don't know, but he knows how far yeah. he can take us, right? Yeah. Amen. And sometimes we want the easy way out. Like it has to be easy. It has to be quick. What? Nine months theology course. Are you kidding me? Nine months? You got to do what? Read every day, pray every day, keep on top of all this work? Uh-uh. It don't
don't suit me, that don't fit with my schedule. <laughs> right? Isn't that how we are? I, that, maybe it's just me. <laughs> Hebrews 12.2. Let's go to Hebrews 12.2. And the scripture reads, okay, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God. Amen. And it goes back to the, 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 the pain part, right? Before the joy set before him. Are we, are we really willing to say, God, expand my territory, whatever that looks like. If that means that you'll take me in to another country, I'll go, God. If it means that I won't have a place to lay my head, you know what? Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head, but God is the one who provides. And if it means, yes, stay here, but give. Or, you know, whatever it is, deal with these people. Because sometimes, I'll tell you what, it can be frustrating. It can be hard. There have been days, especially during the pandemic, one the other day, it was like two weeks ago, 5 o'clock in the morning was the first phone call that I received. And after that, until like 7 o'clock at night, it had been one call after another, after another, after another. Oh, my goodness. And I remember getting off the phone. And in between, I've got my headset, so I'm cooking and I'm doing the things that I need to do. But when I got off the phone, I said to my husband, holy smokes. Oh, my gosh. This is what it means. Expand my territory. But it's loving people when we can't love them anymore. Amen. It's understanding when we can't understand anymore. Because it's not me, it's God. Amen. They're not looking to what I can give them. Right. Yeah. Heck, you look at my life. I have made so many mistakes. But, but I know the word of God. Amen. And that's what I can pour out and say, Holy Spirit, take over. Because my mouth is tired. Right? Amen. right? Amen. Expanding Hallelujah. our territory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's go, the next point that I want to point out is that he said, expand my territory, uh, bless me and expand my territory. Be with me in all that I do. Okay, let's look at Exodus thirty-three, fifteen, And all these are scriptures that we know, but sometimes we've got to refresh, right? We've got to fan that flame and keep the hope alive, amen? Right. Then he said to him, Who's he? It was Moses who said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. That was my prayer this morning. If your presence is not there, give me laryngitis, God. Yeah. I don't want to speak something that is out of season or out of order. I want to speak what you would have me to speak to your people to encourage them. Amen. Because Amen. my word means nothing. We've got to recognize that we are nothing. We are nothing. Unless the Lord is with us. Amen. 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 Unless he is there. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And we've got to be willing to say, okay, God, where am I going? Where am I going? And sometimes we just run out of the house. We haven't prayed. But it's okay at that moment as you're stepping, you can say, God, where are we going, Holy Spirit? Because this is your temple. You direct it. You tell it where to go. And unless we've been spending time with him, we're not going to recognize on, what he yeah. sounds like. That's right. Right? Because he speaks to all of us differently. That's right. Right? My husband gets this little fuzz on the back here and the little hairs here stick up. And, you know, I'm like, whoa. But when he tells me, ooh, look. And I've looked and I think, well, where did them hairs come from? And they'll stick up. And, it's, and it's, that's when he feels that God is confirming something to him. For me, it's different because I tell the Lord, honestly, your daughter's a dodo. Speak to me in my dreams, God. But don't just speak to me in my dreams. Make my dreams be like Daniel, that I'll understand what they mean. Amen. Otherwise, I'm even more lost than when before I dreamt, right? <laughs> but let's look at Joshua 1.9, because look, God wants us to be so sure. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua, Joshua was telling the people here, we're going to cross the Jordan, but don't be afraid because I was already with the Lord when we crossed the Red Sea and God made a way. God got us through. Do not be afraid or courageous. You got to know who you're going to for counsel. You got to know who you're talking to. Don't go to someone who ain't never been through it. Come on, man. Go to someone who knows who can say the ground is going to be dry. I don't care that it's pouring wet outside. Amen. we got to go to someone who's going to 
be able to pick us up, encourage us to say, don't be afraid, because God is with you. Come on. Let's pray right now. Right? Psalm 16a. He says, I know the Lord is always with me. See, this is David. Our King David saying, I know the Lord is with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. See, David knew. Do we really have the confidence this morning? We say it all the time. But when trials and tribulations come, it really reveals what people believe. And we've got to be certain. We've got to know that we know he is right here. He's right here. He's in front of me. And he's behind me. Hello, Holy Spirit. He is in me, in fact. Right? We have to know this. We've got to be so certain everything we do. And it is the Lord, hallelujah, Hebrews 13, 5, says, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. Mm. For God has said, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Amen. I can tell you, as someone who was backslid for 17 years, God was always with me. And it was even during that time that trials and tribulations would come my way. And my mom said to me once, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why these things always happen to you. And I remember looking at my mom because I, I was backslid. And I said, you know what, mom? I know God sits up there and he says, hmm, who can handle this? <laughs> Lily can. Mm. Lily can. And I remember that I wouldn't get mad when things came because I knew God... You have not left me. Because if I can still feel your presence and know that you are with me, it's my stupid bad decisions that have me where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I can't get mad at you. But right. because of shame, I wouldn't come to the Lord. I wouldn't come and repent because, oh my gosh, I haven't been there for so long. What are people going to say? Oh my goodness, 17 years of my life down the tube worried about what people were going to say? When all that mattered, I could have gotten on my knees right there in my room and said, God, forgive me. What am I doing? Yeah, yeah, Amen? Because he yeah. will never leave you nor forsake you. But the greatest of all tragedies that came to my life, oh, he was right there. And there was Pastor Ralph with him. And God didn't leave me alone. You know, he was always there. Amen? Amen. So the fourth thing that he says and keep me from all trouble and pain. This is our number five, but it's number four of what, with regards to the prayer. See, we have to recognize that we live in a fallen world. Amen. People are going to disappoint us. People are going to backstab us. They're going to talk about us. They're going to murmur and gripe about us. They are going to do us wrong. Our own family members. The Bible says that the members of a man's household, what is it? The enemies of a man will be the members of his own household. The Word of God says it. So it shouldn't shock you when your husband, your wife, your kids, your cousin, your uncle, your mama, your daddy, your auntie, somebody stabbed you in the back. Did you think it was going to be any different? But what you've got to recognize is that's the devil working through them. That's right. To keep that division in your family. That's right. We can't be taking things personal. But I do have a rule of thumb that I live by because I'll text somebody. I'll text members of my household. Members of my family. I text them once. Okay, they didn't respond. I'm try them again. And then they don't respond again. Freeze of charm. I'm gonna try one more time. I call them or text them again. They don't respond. Then I realize, oh, okay, you don't want to have anything to do with me. So I stop. But that doesn't mean I stop praying for them. That's right. I just stop bugging them. And when I see them, you didn't want to answer my text. You didn't want to have a relationship with me. Why am I gonna get in your face? So I don't. But I pray for them, and I say, Lord, heal their heart. Whatever I did, heal them, right? But we have to understand that it's because it's a fallen world. We have an enemy that hates us, right? So trials, temptations, sickness, illnesses, financial issues, these are all situations that we're going to encounter. We're not going to get away from them just because we're Christians. Right? We're going to have them. What matters, though, where do we put our trust when these things happen? Where do we put our trust? Who do we go to? Do we get on the phone and murmur and complain to everyone, or do we go to the cross? 
Do we, do we be a Mary at that moment and fall before him? Or do we be a Martha being busy about everything else? <laughs> right? <laughs> God is willing. God is willing to protect us and to keep us safe. You know, but we can't assume that if we step into the fire, that we're not going to get burned. Come on. Come on now, brain surgeons. You step into a fire, you're going to get burned. God didn't tell you to go step into the fire. He didn't do that. So we have to be very, very careful. We have to know that God always makes a way for us. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Look at what the Word of God says. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we set our mind, we want to do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Man, and we start opening the door to the devil. Oh, yeah. Opening those little doors. Hey, I just want to know how everybody's doing. How are you doing? You call the friends from before. How are you doing? How's it going? Oh, yeah, I just want to tell you I'm going to church. And no sooner have you said that, they don't want to hear from you anymore. Ah, oh, but you know, so and so. And then they get you all wrapped up in everything that's going on. And because you have such a wonderful, listening, caring ear, you begin to listen to it. And next thing you know, you're being sucked into it again. And you're thinking, oh, I should go visit the homies. I should go visit my girls because you know what? They're going through things. Oh, I got the answer. I can go help them. No, 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 no. And then all of a sudden, just as you're getting ready to leave, there goes sister so and so hey sis how you doing god bless you or you run into a brother and you go oh oh man i just saw brother marty i was on my way i saw brother marty oh my gosh that's god look but with the temptation will also make the, the way of escape god is always faithful if we're looking God is always faithful. He always makes a way, but sometimes we ignore it. Oh, bro, I can't talk to you right now, bro. I can't talk to you because I, I got to do something. God has me on a mission. Come on now. That's how people fall. Second Thessalonians 3 3. Hallelujah. But the Lord is faithful. God, He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. God is faithful. Don't ever think, I don't know what to do. The devil's got me all tied up and bound. No, no, no. Pick up your phone. Call a brother or sister that can truly help you. Not the one who's been telling you to go do mischievous stuff. The unsaved one. Call the saved one. Even if it's a family member, call the saved one who can help you because they're going to put you on guard. They're going to put you on track, right? If they truly are a Christian, they're not going to encourage your bad behavior or your bad thoughts or your bad feelings at that moment. Because in a moment of anger, we say, what? He shoved you? Oh, girl, don't put up with that. That's bad advice. Yeah, just go for a walk. Go pray. Go pray. He don't know what he's doing right now. Stay away from him when he's angry. Don't keep going after him. If he's already mad, he's already mad. we got to have some sense. The little one just shut up. But sometimes, <laughs> no, but I want to talk right now. Because I know I'm a woman. I've done that. And we keep pressing, no, but I want to talk about my feelings. Men aren't like that. You're making him more mad. Let him go. Let the man go to sleep. he got to go to work. Hallelujah. Right? <laughs> Tell you, no, 
Do not be in fear of them, for the, it is the Lord your God who goes with you. Amen. Psalm 34, 19. I want to make sure these, these things are sticking. Amen. So Psalm 34, 19, and it reads, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Amen. And this here is our confirmation. Because Yabates prayed, Keep me from all trouble and pain, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. So what he was saying is, don't let the troubles and the pain consume me. But he knew Hamma go through some things. That was a time of war that he was praying that. So he knew that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of each and every obstacle. For every hurdle that is already popping up in your life, because they're already there, you we just don't see them. But in the spirit realm, if we could see in the spirit, we'd see all these hurdles and mountains and troubles and potholes that you're not going to be able to see. And God's already prepared something. He's going to deliver you. He's going to guide you. Amen. Right? But we got to do our part. we got to go to him. So I want to go back to 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. Because I want to see, did we get it a second time? There we go. So he was the one who prayed to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And what did God do? It says, and God granted him his request. Mm -hmm. Now, why? What did God, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in our prayer life. We get so caught up and we hear, ooh, did you hear Brother Milton pray? Ooh, he prayed for like five minutes and he said this and he said that and then someone asked you to pray and then now you want to outdo him because, ooh, I want to show I'm just as spiritual as Brother Milton. Ooh, I can pray like that too. Hear me, everybody. And yet, Yabes did not pray some five-minute prayer. Yeah, that was a 20-second prayer. You know what God looked at? His heart. God knew with all his heart he believed. Sometimes we get so caught up, oh, I didn't get a chance to pray. And I've been there, guys. Hello, where I've prayed maybe one or two minutes. But I know that in theology class it says you got to pray for 30 minutes before you leave the house. And there's times I don't have time to do that because I might get a call. Hey, Mom, my car broke down. Can you come give me a ride? I was on my way to work. I, I, I gotta get dressed. I gotta brush my teeth. Okay, put on a hat. Let's go, because I gotta go help. And so I'm praying along the way. And we get so caught up, we condemn ourselves like, oh no. And I'm not saying don't pray for 30 minutes. I'm not saying that at all, because we should go into a, our prayer closet. That's right. But it's so, there's gotta be those days that all you say is, God, thank you that I'm alive today, God. Just be with me, Lord. You know I'm running late. I gotta get my coffee. I gotta get off to work, God. Lord, I, I, I'll come back later, but thank you for being my God. Amen. And sometimes you gotta run out the door and that's it. Don't shoot yourself in the foot when, when you have those mornings. I'm not saying make a custom of that, okay? But in all our prayers, if our heart is not in it, okay, just get up off your knees or whatever you're doing because you're just wasting your time. That's, right. That's just a waste of time and oxygen. Amen? Amen? Now, here it says God granted him his request. There are times, however, that you can pray and you pray and you pray again. And oh my gosh, Lord, I have been praying for months now. I have been praying for years now. Right. Why yeah. are you not moving faster? Do you not hear me? God, you <laughs> deaf? Uh, these are, guys, oh my gosh. I have prayed these things like, Lord, you ain't deaf up there. Come on now, don't play with me. Wake up, Lord, listen to me. God, I love you. You're my dad. But come on, wake up. Do you sleep in too long? And yet, I know, and then I have to go, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I know you're, you're a God that doesn't sleep. I'm sorry. I'm being rude, Lord. But God, I'm getting impatient. Now, I want to go then to Luke chapter, it's actually chapter 11, uh, 5 through 9. Oh, good. Oh, my gosh. Brandon is so good, you guys. He did my PowerPoint. And, and I had sent him the wrong scripture. You are the bomb diggity, dude. I'm kidding forever. 
Then teaching them more about prayer. Who was teaching them? Jesus was teaching them. And he says, he used the story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me. That would be me. Don't bother me. The door is locked. Go away. Me and my family are in bed. All right. I can't help you. Go away. <laughs> Next one. That would be me. I'm like, what? Oh, my gosh. But I tell you this. Though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. Sometimes God doesn't answer our prayer because what would happen if he did? Would that be it? Mm. Would that be the end of the road? Because now you have nothing to persist about. And this is what you've spent your time praying about. And every time you go to him, it's the same thing. Sometimes, you know what? We got to get away. Like if I was praying for this couple all the time, and this is all that consumes my prayer time is I'm praying for them. Man. I gotta move on to this couple. I gotta move on to that couple. Sometimes God just says, All right, I heard you the first time. Now I'm gonna make you wait. Because the waiting period refines us. Right? But not only that, we have to come to the place where we believe that, that God is the only door left. Amen. Because we're, our human nature says, Okay. This is plan A. And if plan A doesn't work, I'm going to go to plan B. And we're quick, like, oh, I tried. See, even with me calling family members, I'll text you. Okay, let me wait a couple days, let me text you again. Okay, you still didn't respond, let me text you a third time. Oh, that's it, got to go to plan B. Now I'm not going to text you no more. Right? But God isn't like us who gives up. God, if we could figure out all our own problems, right? If things came that quick, we don't need God. Come on, Because that's our plan B a lot of times. Oh, you know what? God ain't answering. I'm going to figure it out. Mm. Isn't that what Sarah did when she said to her man, go be with Hagar, honey? Heck, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> go to plan B. Nick, we can wait on the Lord. Amen. We can wait. And we say, God, wait up. Oh, because yeah. prayer is about faith, right? It's not about what we can and cannot do. It's about believing that God can and that God is the only one who can. Amen. Right? We were having this talk yesterday. I think it was yesterday with my husband. He heard me on the phone counseling a woman who's having some issues with her husband. And, and of course, you know, you go through stuff and I can't do it anymore. I can't, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, what did you tell her? And I said, I told her to do what I did. I would go month after month after month praying for my husband and here we were we were bible study leaders at that time but i had to keep praying and praying and then we became pastors and some of the issues were still there and i had to keep praying and praying and say god what is wrong with this man he preaches about it all the time he's he'll tell you himself he was a little <laughs> selfish when it came to that green paper <laughs>
Yeah. He's out there. Why? Because he's all like, I gotta provide. And only they only offer the class on Saturdays and Sundays. He would never have done it because he knows that his place is here. Yeah. But he took the class because it's the only time it's offered, and, and he's thinking about us. Yeah. And it, and the thing is that the class was like like fifteen hundred dollars to take these classes. And, and let me tell you, it was God, because we had to go before the Lord and say, okay, we need 1500 to fall, you know, attached to something out of the sky, like, so that it lands. So yeah. we don't want it in and a balloon, pocket. it'll keep floating, and that's the thing, like, don't let the brick head that's on the head. So we need that, and the money came. We got blessed with the money, it came. We were able to pay for his class. Then they said only so many more openings he was able to get in. Wow. And so we know that it's the Lord who opened the doors. And that's where the man is. To what? So that he can provide. So that he can. He's so sweet. You guys don't know. I always get the best Christmas under the Christmas tree, guys. I do. <laughs> always the best present for Christmas time. Because he's, he's so sweet. He has changed. But he wasn't always like that. He wasn't always like that. He was a little selfish. But God, it was God. It wasn't anything that I said or anything that I did because I never threatened to leave the man. I love the man. I like the man. I wanted to be around the man. I want to share life with that man. But it was God. Amen. It was the Lord. Amen? But look at Luke uh, 11, 9 and 10 in the Message Bible. I love it. It says, here's what I'm saying. Ask and you'll get. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. Don't argue with God. Come on now. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. I'm going to stop right there. That's it. This is not, I love how it says that. You know what? Just don't go around in circles. Be direct with God. He already knows what you need and want anyways. He read your mind already. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So he already knows. He just wants to hear from you. But he wants your heart to be pure. Amen? He yeah. wants to be pure. You know what? We need faith. We need faith. I'm going to call the worship team to come up because I want to sing that song, Waymaker, again. Because you know what? God is our, our give me just a second, because um, we're going to read one more scripture. So, He is our Waymaker. He is a promise keeper. He is. These things are not written just because we needed another good book on the planet. It's come because on. it's the book. That's and right. it has all the answers. That's right. Right? It has every answer we need. And when we come to him like the evades and we say, God, bless me and expand my territory, meaning I'm willing to do something for you, Lord, right? God wants to pour it out on us. He wants to pour it out. And what else did he say to the Lord? He says, expand my territory. He said, be with me in all that I do. Keep me from all trouble and pain. I believe it. 11, Hebrews 11, 6. We all know the scripture. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It is God. It is only God. Okay, the worship team can come up. Sorry. I thought it was confusing. I was talking to him and I'm oh, sorry guys, I confused you. God is the one who can move the mountains for us. Amen. Nothing is impossible to the Lord. Nothing. I want us to sing this song. And I want us to really listen to what it's saying because when we can't see it, don't think that God's not doing something. Come on now. Just because we don't feel it. God is working. He's working in our family members. Amen. He's working on them. Sometimes it may take a little longer. But God is working on them. But then what are we doing? Are we acting like a bunch of heathens? Cussing people out, flipping people off, slamming the door on people, threatening, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. I'm done with this. I quit. No, we can't do that. We have to stand faithful, believing he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen? Amen. He Amen. is the one. Amen. So I just want you, I pray that you've been encouraged today. Amen. Because this was a simple prayer of faith. That we can pray this way. That we can go to our God and know he wants 
to grant our request just like he did to your Bates. Amen. Amen. He wants to bring us victory, but we, we've got to do our part. Just surrender to him. Mean what you say and say what you mean. God doesn't want to have to figure out all your mess when you don't even understand it. Of course, he's already made sense of it, but he shouldn't have to, oh boy, here she comes again, or here he comes with his mess. He already knows. He wants to give us everything. Everything. He wants to make our lives better. Amen? So we're going to sing the song. We're going to go through it. Consider yourselves dismissed after that. But if you want to come to the altar and pray, cry out to God. Cry out to God. Sometimes we looked at, oh, I want people to lay hands on me. No. You need to cry out to God. He wants to hear from you. He's already heard enough from me. He wants to hear from you. Don't ever be afraid or feel ashamed that you can't come to the altar because, oh no, what are people going to say? Who cares? Because when you stand before him, he's not going to say, oh, bring all your fan club with you. He's not going to do that. You're going to stand there alone and answer for the things that you did or didn't do, what you prayed or what you didn't pray. Amen? Amen. So in the name of Jesus, yes, thank you for bringing down the lights. Hallelujah.